It was the middle of January in 2010, and five churches had been reduced to rubble. A new team of fire experts had been called in to the now fearful East Texas area. We just knew that the devil was busy. He was really, really busy trying to hinder God's work and couldn't believe that a person would actually want to burn church buildings. We have a lot of agencies involved in this investigation, federal, state, local, county, uh, and city agencies. Um, if you put them all together, uh, they would fill up the majority of this room. Lab technicians came with the National Response Team for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, also referred to as the ATF. Now with a local and national team working on the case, as well as local police, the Department of Public Safety, and the Texas Rangers, the hope was to quicken the process of going through evidence found at the four fires being investigated at that time. We still had to do our certified fire investigator report for Grace Community in Lake Athens Baptist and, and gave us an opportunity to look at what other evidence we could find at Thailand Baptist and then go back. Other evidence, like the rock used to break into the Lake Athens Baptist Church. We have DNA from the rocks and the bricks that from the previous churches we collected from. We don't know whose DNA it was. It was recommended by the law enforcement personnel that everybody have on site, someone on site for the next few days at least until uh, the people can be apprehended. Larry Smith is the sheriff of Smith County, but back in 2010, he was one of the agents investigating the arsons for the ATF's response team. Inside the remains of every sanctuary set ablaze so far, Smith described what he saw back then as makeshift campfires. The same thing we were finding, the hymnals and anything you could find, pew cushions and things like that stacked together. Uh, in order to, to do the fire. There was still a puzzle piece missing, buried in the ashes, it seemed. The ATF didn't know what was being used to ignite the church's property, which also led to confusion with the evidence found from the ATF's canine Nina, who had been trained to point out where a fire's point of origin was. She would alert on all these places that, from a fire investigator standpoint, was, was legitimate alert, but all the chemistry from where we'd take the residual from and submit it to the lab came back negative for any accelerant. This meant nothing was showing up on the test as what sparked the downfall of the churches. For his loving kindness is everlasting. But nothing prepares you for this. Um, I've been here three years. Some people have been here for 50 years. It's hard to see this. Investigators didn't give up though. Other items found in the church shone a light on what it was. This was during the flu season as we saw the big gallon jugs of Purell and yeah. hand sanitizer. That's what they were using to start the fire. Hand sanitizers are alcohol based, which according to Smith is significant in two ways. It has a high evaporation rate and is easily washed away by water. Law enforcement was getting rid of the evidence unknowingly. The dog was right, but the chemistry couldn't be captured. The ATF even had to change its protocol uh, after this uh, investigation. Smith explained ATF agents quit using hand sanitizer after giving dogs treats to avoid confusion in future investigations. Even after figuring out the pattern inside the church of how the fire was built and started, there still wasn't a clear path outside to determine how the churches were chosen. It breaks my heart to think that someone would have the gall to do something like that when the churches try to help people. We don't try to hurt nobody. One of the problems law enforcement encountered that slowed them down was the frequency of the fires. But the church is the people. The church isn't the building. So Thailand Baptist Church is very much alive today. January 17th. One day after the Thailand Baptist Church in Tyler was set on fire, the First Church of Christ scientist in the heart of the city burned as well. It was daylight hours when First Church of Christ scientist uh, was caught on fire, and the only thing hiding him from Broadway Street, which is right on Broadway, was some hedges. A few days later in the morning hours, smoke was seen rising from Prairie Creek Fellowship in Lindale. So being targeted doesn't really surprised me because anyone that's trying to do good is, is going to be a target for somebody that's trying to do bad. All of the fires had been set at different times of the day, at different days of the week, and in three different counties. Wanting to find a connection between the churches, law enforcement tried a different approach by mapping out where the fires had already taken place. 
ATF has uh, forensic profilers, and kind of like the ones you see on TV, Edgewood would be the next church, and it ended up being Wills Point. The map might not have shown where the next fire was, but Smith says this would lead them to a different clue. They're doing church fires here, here, and here. They must live somewhere in the middle. Arson wasn't the only crime committed 10 years ago by Jason Bork and Daniel McAllister, the two men responsible for burning down 10 churches in East Texas. Electronics and musical instruments were also stolen. We recovered a couple of guitars and were able to identify at least one of them as having come from Lake Athens Baptist Church. A video camera was also found at a pawn shop in Tyler with a wedding on it. Because the wedding was still on that when we recovered the, the camera, uh, we could tell what church it came out of. The ATF was also gathering evidence through a tip line. Smith says some ludicrous tips would come in, but so did one that would lead law enforcement to the names of the arsonist. Now stay with CBS 19 throughout the week at 10 o'clock as we look back through the fire to remember the East Texas church fires.